Hi, welcome to today's gentle flow. For today's practice, you are going to want just one block or shoebox, thick, sturdy book, whatever works best for you. And we'll get started in an easy seat. So whichever leg you prefer in front, hands can rest on your knees, maybe soften or close your eyes. You might start by rolling your shoulders up towards your ears and sliding them down the back a few rounds. Just reminding ourselves here, these gentle practices, we're taking a little extra time here just to go nice and slow. So give yourself permission, or maybe challenge yourself to move a little more slowly than you might typically want to. Next round of breath, inhale, reach your arms towards the sky. Exhale, right hand outside of right hip, side stretch over towards the left, right rather left arm overhead, breathing into that space along the side body. Give yourself a few rounds of breath here. Noticing that left shoulder might want to dip down and just gently encouraging it to pull back. Next round of breath back towards center. Other side, left hand outside of hip, right arm reaches overhead. Breathing here. Breathing into that side stretch. And then gently returning yourself back towards center. Twisting this time towards the right. Left hand comes outside. That right knee, right hand props up behind you. Breathing into this shape. Gaze can drift over the right shoulder. And then keeping your left hand planted Reach your right arm overhead. A bit of a twist and side stretch variation. Continuing that long line of energy through your right hand. Using your left hand to anchor. Then returning back towards center. Other side, right hand outside of left knee. Left hand props up behind you. Pause here in this twist first. Keeping our spine long, not cranking or forcing anything here. Just gently gazing over that left shoulder. Left hand lifts overhead, finding that twist side stretch variation. Full round of breath here, nice and slow. Then returning back towards center, unwind. Both soles of the feet press together for butterfly. Now pulling your heels in towards your body as far as feels good. Hands can wrap around your toes. You might even start to gently pull yourself forward. If it's available here, you might use your elbows or your forearms here to encourage your knees towards the mat. But again, honoring your edge, so finding your edge here. Giving ourselves a few rounds of breath here. Maybe your eyes are soft or closed. Just noticing where you feel the sensation. Can gently begin to back out of that shape. Starting by lifting your head and shoulders out of that position. And then keeping your right foot about where it is. Right shin comes parallel to the top edge of the mat. Left shin parallel with the long edge of the mat. Walking your hands forward here for a 90-90, or we call this a deer pose sometimes in yin practice. You're welcome to take that block in front of you at a height that feels good. Maybe resting your forearms there. Breathing here for just a few moments. Noticing if your right hip's really wanting to pick up off the mat, just gently encouraging it towards the mat here, even if that means backing your upper body out of the pose a little bit. One more full round of breath. 
then pressing into that block. Lift your upper body out of the shape. Left foot comes up to meet right, pausing for almost a moment in butterfly before right shin comes parallel to the long edge of the mat, left shin parallel towards the top, and then find your position on this side. Again, making any adjustments that you need to. This side of my body tends to be a little tighter, so I take the block at a higher stance here. Again, keeping that integrity in the pose. So allowing your upper body to back out if it helps your lower body stay grounded. And gently lifting out of that shape once more. You can remove the block, soles of the feet will press together for just a moment, and then rolling over your shins or ankles. Just make your way any way that's comfortable to a tabletop position. Hands under shoulders, knees under your hips. Inhale to drop your belly, lift your gaze. Exhale to round the spine, tuck your chin. Give yourself a few rounds here. Typically, I encourage you to work with the pace of your breath. But today, maybe spend a little time, maybe two or three breaths in one of the shapes. Exploring it a little bit. You might shift your hips side to side. Just noticing any of those changes. And then coming to the other pose. Again, maybe rolling a little bit, shifting your weight side to side, but just full permission here to find what feels best for you. Pausing, next time come to a neutral spine, and then extending your left leg long behind you Toes rest at the edge of the mat, then gently rocking forward and then back. So pressing crown of the head forward, then heel presses towards the back wall, rocking out that calf a little bit here. Then spinning your right knee perpendicular. So toes will come off the side of the mat, right hand plants to the mat, left arm reaches towards the sky. Breathe here first, hip reaching towards the sky, fingertips towards the sky, pressing into foot, knee, and hand. Exploring the shape here. Then sweep your top hand overhead, creating a side stretch along that left side of the body, fingertips reaching as far as is available for you. Then returning that left hand to point towards the ceiling, lifting your back foot off the back of the mat, flexing your back toes. You'll notice some activation here in the outer left hip in your glute, little mini half moon here. Give yourself a few rounds of breath here. Starting to feel some fire, reminding we can still have that strength in the slow. Then you might pulse arm overhead, then returning to reach tall. Arm overhead, reaching tall. Once more, arm overhead, reaching tall. Foot back to the mat, hand to the mat, tabletop position. Give yourself a round of cat cows before we go to the other side. When you're ready, extending that right leg long first, gently rocking back and forth, pressing into the heel and then reaching forward. If your body's like mine, you might hear some snap crackle pops right now, just embracing it. <laughs> when you're ready, pivoting that left knee so it's perpendicular, toes off the mat, Left hand plants into the mat, right arm reaches towards the sky, finding your base here. Again, take time encouraging that hip towards the sky, pressing into your foot, knee, and hand for that base. 
fingertips reach tall, then sweeping that arm overhead. Long line of energy all the way from fingertips to that blade edge of the foot that's on the mat. Breathing here. Reaching your arm back towards the sky. Back foot lifts off the mat, finding mini half moon here. It's again engaging that outer hip, that right glute, flexing your toes. You might bring in those pulses, arm reaches overhead and back towards the ceiling. I always find that sometimes if holding a pose is a bit tricky for me, adding pulses can sometimes take my mind off of it. Pausing next time your arm is lifted, foot back to the mat, hand to the mat, tabletop position once more. Then walking your hands forward about a handprint, tuck your toes, lift your hips for downward facing dog. First down dog of the practice, maybe first down dog of your day, might pedal out your legs here, maybe shift the hips side to side got some time here just to bring in any movement feels good for your body now when I prompt downward facing dog you're always welcome to take a tabletop or a child's pose in this practice as well so maybe just challenging yourself here to listen to your body find what works for you Inhale, sweep your right leg towards the sky. Exhale, step it to the outside of your right hand. Gently lowering your back knee, untuck your toes. Noticing here, if you'd like a little more space for your upper body, you can bring a block under your hands, planting left hand into the block or mat. Right arm reaches behind you. This might be right where you stay or bending that back knee Maybe you can find those toes. Maybe you just stay reaching. About three full rounds of breath, wherever you are and wherever feels best for you. If you have that hand around your toes, gentle pressure between toes and hand. Toes kick into hand as much as the hand resists your foot. Next, exhale, gentle release, toes to the mat, hand to the mat, stepping back to downward facing dog once more. Give yourself a few rounds of breath here, hips reaching towards the sky, heels towards the mat. Inhale your left leg to sky. Exhale, step it to the outside of your left hand, gently lowering that back knee, untuck your toes. So again, checking in with your body. Might bring in that block here. I know that serves me better on this side. Right hands can plant into block or mat. Left arm reaches behind you. Maybe you stay here or reaching to see if you can find those toes, honoring what feels best in your body. If you have the toes here, you might feel a little extra stretch along the front of your right quad along with some shoulder opening along the left shoulder. Breathing into where you feel that sensation. Gentle release, toes to the mat, hand back to mat, removing that block if you need to. Tuck your back toes, stepping back to downward facing dog. Three full rounds of breath here. Next, inhale, bend your knees and look forward. Exhale, step or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale, half lift, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms reach towards the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center, Tadasana. Feet can be hip distance 
or toes touching if you prefer whatever feels best for you. Pause here for a moment. I'll explain a little breathing exercise we're gonna do here. We're gonna take breath of joy. So I'll prompt us through, I'll demonstrate first. We'll reach arms to the sky and then you fold all the way through. You'll inhale, arms reach up, inhale open, inhale up, exhale fold all the way through. So starting from that mountain pose, inhale reach your arms tall, exhale forward fold, inhale arms up, inhale open, inhale reach tall, exhale through, inhale up, inhale open, inhale tall, exhale through. Two more at your pace. Pausing in that forward fold, and then allowing yourself to slowly roll yourself up. Palms facing forward. Inhale, arms reach to the sky. Exhale, fold all the way through. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms reach towards the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms forward and up. Exhale, fold all the way through. Half lift, pause here, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Exhale here. Inhale to forward fold. Pause here. Exhale here. Inhale to reach tall, Urdhva Hastasana. Pause here. Exhale here. Inhale to draw your hands to heart center. Pause here. Exhale here. Inhale, arms forward and up. Exhale, fold all the way through, returning to that natural pace. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, reach tall. Exhale, hands to heart center. Adding on. Inhale, hands forward and up. Exhale, fold all the way through. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, plant your hands. Step or hop back to your plank position. Inhale and plank. Exhale all the way to the mat. Untuck your toes, hands stay under shoulders. Inhale, lift for cobra. Just as high as feels good. Exhale back to the mat, two more rounds. Inhale, lift to cobra. Exhale to mat. Inhale, lift to cobra, keeping those elbows tucked in. Exhale back to the mat. Inhale, press up to your plank. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Five rounds of breath here. Yogi's choice, you can stay in down dog, bringing in any movement that feels good. You can come to tabletop, pausing in stillness or bringing in some cat cows, or you can make your way towards a child pose. Finding what feels good for you giving yourself some time there. If you're not in down dog, making your way there. Inhale to bend your knees and look forward. Exhale, step or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale, half lift, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms reach towards the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, hands come forward and up, maybe that back bend. Exhale, fold all the way through. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, plant your hands, step or hop back to plank. 
Inhale and plank. Exhale, chaturanga or the mat. Inhale for up dog or cobra. If you're in up dog, tops of feet to the mat. Heart pulls through. Knees lifted off the mat. Give yourself a full round of breath here in cobra or up dog. When you're ready, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Again, you can always take tabletop or child's. Five rounds of breath. Find what feels good. If you're not in down dog, making your way there. Inhale, bend your knees and look forward. Exhale, step or hop to the top of the mat. Inhale, half lift, squeeze your shoulder blades. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale to chair, hips sink down, fingertips lift. Pausing here for a moment. Hips stay nice and low. But noticing here, if you're trying to come low in the pose but it's pulling you forward more so, allow yourself to be a little higher in chair, maybe less bend in your knees, but keeping that integrity with your heart staying lifted. Hands can come to heart center. Pausing here still. Full round of breath. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, plant your hands to the mat. Step or hop back to plank. Inhale and plank. Exhale for chaturanga or the mat. Inhale for cobra or up dog. Exhale, hips up and back, down dog. Inhale your right leg towards the sky. Exhale, step it between your hands, warrior one. Back foot in and out at 45 degrees. Lifting your arms here. Now give yourself time to set up in this pose because we'll be here for a moment. Back foot's at 45 degrees, but you're still pressing into the blade edge of that back foot. Bend in that front knee, and I take a pretty wide stance. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but my feet are almost as wide as the mat. Sometimes if you're feeling really unstable, taking this version almost like where you're one and a half, can help us to stabilize here. Hands come to hips, straightening that front leg, hinge forward for pyramid. Hands can stay at hips if that feels best for you or allow them to fall to the mat, framing your foot. Nose points towards knee, breathing here. Next round of breath, slowly bending into that front knee, arms lift with it, then hands to the mat. Step back to your plank position. Holding in your plank, three rounds of breath, toes or knees. Continuing to squeeze your glutes together, puff up the back of your heart, press into your heels. Next breath, hips up and back, down dog. Inhale, left leg to sky. Exhale, step it between your hands, warrior one on the other side. So back foot in and out at 45 degrees. Find your base here. Again, making those adjustments is necessary. Left hip continues to pull back. Right hip pulls forward. So we're pointing towards the top of the mat. I love these gentle flows because I feel like it gives me some time to actually sink into the poses, thinking about what my body's doing. When you're ready, hands can come to hips, straightening that front leg, hinge forward. Hands can come to frame the foot, or if it feels better to keep your hands on your hips, they can stay right there. Nose points towards your knee. 
pyramid pose. Again, you might notice your right hip wanting to open up towards the side, just encouraging it to point down towards the mat. Next breath, bend into your front knee, returning to warrior one. Hands come back to the mat, finding your plank, toes or knees, three rounds of breath. Crown of the head reaches forward, heels press back, belly button pulls towards your spine, feeling your strength and stability here. Next breath, hips up and back. Inhale, bend your knees and look forward. Exhale, step or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms reach towards the sky. Exhale, draw your hands to heart center. Heart pulls towards your thumbs. Elbows press away from each other. Allow your eyes to soften or close here. Three full rounds of breath. Rooting down into both feet equally. Next, inhale, take your arms all the way towards the sky. Exhale, fold all the way through. Hang heavy. Inhale, half lift, crown of the head reaches forward. Exhale, forward fold. Plant your hands, this time stepping just your left foot back for warrior two. So back foot parallel with the short edge of the mat. Arms at shoulder height. Find your base here. Pressing into the blade edge of that back foot. Bend in the front knee. Inhale, right palm flips up, reach forward. Exhale, reverse your warrior, right arm overhead. Inhale, extended side angle, left arm overhead. Exhale, back to warrior two. Flowing through that once more, taking a full round of breath in each shape. So inhale, palm flips up, reach forward. Pause here. Exhale. Inhale, sweep overhead, reverse warrior. Pause here. Exhale. Inhale to extended side angle. Left arm overhead, pause here. Exhale. Inhale, returning to your warrior two. Straightening that front leg, toes point towards long edge of the mat. Hands come to hips. Wide legged forward fold. Maybe you bring opposite hand to opposite elbow. Hands can rest on the mat or a block. If you'd like to pull yourself deeper, peace fingers around the big toes, pulling yourself into that shape. Wherever you are, just allowing that head to hang heavy. Next breath, if you have a binder or grip, release it. Inhale, half lift, shoulders towards hip height. Exhale, shift your weight over towards that back foot, bending into your left knee. Might stop here at a side lunge. Maybe you sink all the way down for skandasana. Toes point towards the sky. Back heel will likely lift off the mat. Hands can stay here as a little tripod, or you can bring them up to your heart for a little balance challenge. Again, listening to what feels best for your body today. Then slowly walking your hands back towards that extended leg, bending into your front knee to return to low lunge. Stepping forward for forward fold, Uttanasana. Hang heavy. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Other side, plant your hand, step just your right foot back this time. Yes, your other foot. Back foot parallel to the short edge of the mat. Find your base here. 
Should mention here, gaze drifts over that arm extended in front of you. Hips stay pointing towards the long edge of the mat. Inhale, left palm flips up, reach forward. Exhale, reverse your warrior. Inhale, extended side angle, right arm overhead. Exhale, back to warrior two. Inhale, palm flips up, pause. Exhale here. Inhale, reverse warrior. Pause. Exhale here. Inhale, extended side angle. Pause. Exhale here. Inhale, returning to your warrior two. Arms at shoulder height and then straighten that front leg, toes to long edge of the mat, hinge forward. Maybe you take the feet a little wider this time, seeing if that feels good in your body. Hands once again can rest on mat or block. Opposite hand to opposite elbow or using your peace fingers to pull you deeper into the shape. Whatever feels best for you. Next breath, releasing any binder grip you may have. Inhale, half lift, shoulders up towards hip height. Exhale to forward fold. Shifting weight towards the back of your mat once more, bending into that right knee. Maybe you pause here at the side lunge. Maybe you sink all the way down for skandasana on this side. Again, pausing wherever feels best for you on this side of your body. Allowing yourself to breathe here. Checking in with those sensations you feel. Then slowly walking your hands, turn your toes back to the top of the mat for low lunge. Stepping right foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Now pause here, bringing a generous bend to your knees so you can feel your chest resting on your thighs. You'll bring both hands under your feet for gorilla pose. Bringing your toes all the way up towards your wrist creases. You might gently shift your weight side to side here. But again, bringing as much of a bend to your knee here as you need to for your feet to make it all the way up towards your wrists. Gently shifting that weight. Head hangs heavy here. Giving yourself about three rounds of breath. When you're ready, releasing your hands out from under your feet. Slowly rolling up almost vertebrae by vertebrae. Palms face forward for Tadasana. Breathing here as you root down bet between, you root down through both feet. Palms face forward. Eyes can soften or close. Next breath, inhale, reach your arms to the sky. Exhale, fold all the way through. Plant your hands, step or hop back to your plank. Inhale and plank. Exhale, hips up and back, down dog. Inhale your right leg towards the sky. Exhale, step it between your hands for crescent. So staying on the ball of that back foot, Arms reach tall, feeling into your base here. Then hands come behind low back, interlacing your fingers behind your seat, knuckles press towards the floor, heart and gaze lift towards the sky. Allowing yourself three full rounds of breath here. Noticing if with each round you can maybe press your knuckles just the teeniest bit lower. Squeezing those shoulder blades together. And 
Next breath, release, arms reach tall once more before pulling them to heart center. Shift your weight forward for warrior three. Back foot can lift off the mat or used as a kickstand. You're also welcome to take your hands to the block at the highest setting in front of you, taking a supported warrior three. So finding what works for you. Engagement in that back glute. Sturdy in that standing leg. Breathe here. Slowly bending into that front knee, returning to crescent, arms lift, hands come back to the mat, stepping back to plank position once more. Inhale in your plank, puff up the back of your heart. Exhale, hips up and back, down dog. Inhale, left leg to sky. Exhale, step it between your hands. I was going to say warrior crescent on the other side. Hands reach tall. Feeling stable in your base. Once again, your feet won't be quite as wide as they were in warrior one, but noticing if you don't feel stable, you might have your feet a little too close together. So again, the feet should be parallel. In the terms, your feet are on train tracks, not a tight rope. Hands come behind your low back. Interlacing your fingers, this time maybe opposite thumb on top. Knuckles press towards the floor, heart towards the sky. Three full rounds of breath here. Squeezing your shoulder blades, feeling that openness across the front of your chest. Next breath, releasing arms back to sky. Hands come to heart center, shifting forward for your warrior three. Once again, you can use that block here. That helps you find the shape or keeping hands at heart center. If your back toes are lifted, right toes continue to flex towards your face. Allow yourself to embrace any wobbles or wiggles here. Then bending back into that front knee, return to crescent, hands to the mat, step back to your plank position. Inhale and plank, exhale, hips up and back, down dog. Inhale, bend your knees and look forward. Exhale, step or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms reach towards the sky. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, take your arms forward and up tallest you've been today. Exhale, fold all the way through. Plant your hands, step or hop back to your plank. Check in with your body. Last chance for Chaturanga Vinyasa if you want it. If not, meet right back in down dog. From down dog, inhale your right leg towards the sky. Exhale, step it between your hands, warrior two. Before you lift up, Take your block at its highest setting, placing it right at the top of your mat. Then find your warrior two. Arms at shoulder height. Breathe here. Now you have a few options here. You're welcome to take that front hand, shift it towards the block, and just practice shifting your weight forward and back. That is beautiful. Or you can plant the hand Lift your back leg, lift your left arm, half moon. Toes flexing towards the face. Left arm can stay reaching tall, or you might play with bringing it to low back. Sometimes that can feel really nice in our shoulder. So again, finding what works for you. 
I've had some questions about where your gaze should be. Some people feel a little stronger with hand, looking down at their hand. If you start to want to challenge your balance, you might lift your gaze towards neutral. If you really want to challenge your balance, gaze lifts towards your extended arm overhead. Again, finding what works for your balance and also what feels good in your neck. Next round of breath, bending into that front knee, return to your warrior two. Cartwheel hands to the mat, stepping back to plank. Inhale and plank, hips up and back, down dog. Give yourself about three full rounds of breath in that down dog. You might gently pedal out the legs, especially that right calf might feel a little fiery, holding us in a balancing shape. Doing whatever you need to take care of yourself. Inhale your left leg to sky. Exhale, step it between your hands. Setting up for warrior two on the other side. Taking care that your block is in a good place to support you. Arms come to shoulder height. Find your base. Now once again, practicing here, you might just shift your weight almost like a teeter-totter situation, or shifting fully into half moon. Back foot flex towards your face, arms reaching overhead. I should say right arm, left arm supporting you here. Again, it can feel good in that shoulder to bring your hand to your low back. Allowing yourself to fall in and out of the shape as much as you need to. Particularly when we're holding it for a more extended time. Just embracing that as part of the practice. Maybe I just gave you the yoga teacher's curse. It seems like anytime yoga teacher gives me permission to fall out of a pose, that's immediately when I lose my balance. Hopefully I didn't do that to you. When you're ready, Bending into your front knee to return to warrior two. Cartwheel your hands to the mat, stepping back to plank. Inhale and plank, puff up the back of your heart. Use your entire exhale to lower to the mat. Untuck your toes, pausing here. Hands stack under your forehead. Resting your forehead here. Scanning your low body to see where you can bring softness. Noticing if your breath started to get choppy or fiery. Just encouraging it to find its natural rhythm. Checking in here with your low back. If it would feel good to stay right here, if this feels really nourishing, stay right here. If you'd like to lift into Sphinx, lifting your upper body out of the shape, shoulders over elbows, palms can press into the mat or clasp in front of you. And then scanning your low body here to see where you can release. Bringing a little extra softness. If the back bend feels good, but just slightly too intense, you can always bring your block to rest your forehead there. Just lessening the sensation a tiny bit. So again, using this slow down, a more intentional practice a way to find those shapes that feel best for you. Giving yourself time to explore. Then when we return to some of our more fast paced practices, you've already had that experiment time and your body knows what feels good. Next breath, gently lowering back down, resting your forehead on stacked hands here. 
bending both knees. You might allow the heels to fall side to side, windshield wipers, releasing that low back. Once again, extending your legs. Check in with your body. If another round of Sphinx would feel good, I'll guide us through that. If this feels best, stay right here. Four Sphinx, lifting your heart and head out of the shape. Palms can clasp or press into the mat. Gaze drifts between the hands, just slightly in front of us. Scan your low body to see where you can encourage just a tiny bit of extra softness. Allowing yourself to move slowly from wherever you are. We'll gently press into the hands and shift our weight back, hips towards heels for child's pose. Arms as wide or as, or I should say knees as wide or as narrow as feels good for you. Arms can extend in front of you, creating space along the side body, or bring your hands back towards your heels to give your shoulders a little release. Finding what works for you, giving yourself some time there. Once again, returning to that challenge to move a little more slowly than you may want to. Using your next few rounds of breath, hands can press into mat, lifting your upper body out of that shape and sweeping your heels out from under your seat. Legs extend long in front of you. Toes flexing up towards the ceiling. Lengthening our spine here for staff pose. Inhale, reach your arms tall. Exhale, hinge forward, pausing here at a diagonal. Then allow your hands to fall where they may. Maybe they reach your toes or ankles or calf. Finding whatever feels best for you. Heart continues to pull towards our thighs. Sinking into this shape. Using your next inhale, walk your hands back in towards your body, lifting your upper body out of that shape. Then soles of the feet can come to the mat. You'll wanna bring your block with you towards the middle of your mat, lowering down towards your back body. So hips, shoulders, head, soles of the feet, all supported by the mat here. Arms can rest down by your hips. And then lifting your hips just high enough, slide that block under your sacrum. Maybe at its lowest or medium setting, whatever feels good for you. Hands can stay on the mat or come to rest on your belly if that feels best. Allowing yourself to breathe here.
taking a bit of a different variation in this shape. Keeping your left foot planted, gently bring your right knee towards your chest. Now this is going to be a bit of a yogi's choice here. Hands might be able to come around that front shin on your right, around that shin on the front of your right leg. For some bodies, this is enough. If you'd like to play with extending your left leg long, that can bring a really nice stretch to the front of your left hip. But again, check in with your body. If it adds any extra pressure to your low back, just walk the sole of the foot back towards your body. So again, finding what feels best for you. Some bodies that left heel might find the mat and rest there. Others, it may hover just slightly above. Either version is fine. It's again, as long as it's not causing any zinging, pinching, or pain. One more breath wherever you are. Then gently lifting left knee towards your chest. Pause here for a moment, both knees tucked in. Right leg extends long. Again, only if it feels good. Maybe your leg's extended heel on the mat. Maybe you have your sole of the foot pressing into the mat. Heel closer towards your body. Gentle pressure here. Left leg pulling towards your chest, but it doesn't take much here. Full round of breath wherever you are. Right knee hugs in towards your chest, pausing here for a moment before soles of the feet come to rest on the mat. Lifting your hips just high enough to remove that block, hips lower towards the mat. Allowing yourself to breathe here. We'll take one final shape before our Shavasana, pulling both knees into your chest once more, feeling that difference here with the mat supporting you rather than the block. Hands can come to your feet or the back of your thighs for happy baby. It's again, finding what works for you. Hands can rest on the outer edges of your feet maybe the heels, maybe the backs of your thighs. Might feel good to rock back and forth. Play with extending one leg and then the other. Or just enjoying some stillness here. Not rushing your breath or your process. Use your next full round of breath to hug knees in towards your chest. Arms wrap around your shins. Maybe pulling your forehead up towards the knees, a nice little yogi hug before you extend into Shavasana. Legs extend long, arms extend. Allow your body to be heavy here. Allow yourself to take up space here. Scanning your body to see any areas where you can bring in just a tiny bit of extra softness. And I'll let you know when it's time to come out.
body can remain still. If it feels good and is available to you today, you're more than welcome to stay in this place of rest. If it's time to close out your practice, you might start by wiggling fingers and toes, maybe rolling out wrists or ankles. You can even take a good morning stretch, fingertips reaching overhead, toes opposite direction. And taking your time, guide yourself to a fetal position on either side. Allowing yourself to pause there for just a moment, feeling held and supported. And when you're ready, press yourself back up to a comfortable, easy seat. Eyes can stay soft or closed here. Enjoying these last few moments of practice, giving yourself permission here to feel some gratitude. You showed up today. You honored your body with movement and with rest. Just allowing yourself to feel that importance. Being proud of those decisions you're making to take care of yourself. We'll close with a collective breath. Inhale, reach your arms towards the sky. Exhale, draw your hands back to heart center. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today. Thank you for being part of this rad community and I hope you have a wonderful day.